Hello, AVS pros. Welcome to a new video on Azure VMware Solution. My name is Matthew Webb, and I work on the Hyperscaler team here at VMware. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some tips around HCX. Working with this product for three years now, I've done a ton of pilots, and these pilots have exposed me to a lot of HCX implementations. So I thought it would be great to brain dump as many common issues I see that can trip people up, especially if you've never used the product before. One of my favorite things about the tech community is sharing that tribal knowledge. So gather around and let's knock out as many of these as possible. First one is going to be probably the most common issue I see in every install. You've deployed your shiny new AVS instance, downloaded your OVA for the HCX connector, deployed it, and did your initial wizard. Then you pop open vCenter and head over to the HCX plugin, and you get screens that look similar to this. Basically, the dashboard is constantly loading, perhaps some of the stats load with zeros, and the map and other data never load. You click on site pairing and you get a red banner that says HCX inventory cannot be loaded. There are a couple obvious reasons this could be showing. It could because not all services have fully booted up when you rebooted HCX, or somehow the connector appliance is off. If it's not one of those, I found it's often something to do with permissions. When HCX is deployed, an HCX role mapping is added to the local administrators group in vSphere. If you are logging in with an Active Directory account, make sure that they are part of the administrator's local group. If you have verified that the login is under the administrator's group, then you need to make sure that the local domain is accurate. As of recording this, if you customize the local domain to something other than vSphere.local, you need to make sure that you go into the HCX role mapping under HCX admin interface to correct the domain. If you have verified all this information and still are running into issues, check the vCenter FQDN you are connecting to. Does it have a .local ending? There is a KB I ran into recently that has instructions you need to follow to ensure HCX works properly with the .local domain. Second on our list is DHCP usage over layer two extension. Customers have run across this when they move some VMs over with bulk migration. During a bulk migration, there is a reboot that occurs, and if the VM has DHCP for IP assignment, it will likely fail. That's because there is some customization you need to do on a segment security profile to allow the DHCP request to be relayed to on-prem. All KPs will be listed in the description section, including detailed instructions on Microsoft Docs on how to correct this. But the short of it is, you need to create a new segment profile in NSX, which allows a set of MAC addresses. Once saved, you will be able to apply it to your L2E segment that you're deploying your DHCP VMs to. Let's move to our third item on the list. This one is going to be around setting up network profiles for HCX. A common misperception is that a virtual distributed switch is required for HCX. While it is true that you need a VDS to extend networks that VMs will use to maintain the same IP address, that is where the requirement ends. If you do not plan to use Layer 2 extension, then there is no VDS requirement at all. If you do want to use Layer 2 extension and you are on standard virtual switches, there are migration paths you can consider, but they will not be covered in this video. If you do have standard switches and you plan to use HTX for moving VMs and not using Layer 2 extension, you need to make sure that there are port groups that have connectivity to vSphere management interfaces and vCenter. The management network profile that you create will be used to assign service mesh VMs their port group and IP assignment. These appliances do not need to be layered to adjacent to vCenter and vSphere management VM kernels, but do need to have a route and all required ports opened if flowing through a firewall. If you want to put them on the same network as vSphere management VM kernels, you may need to make a virtual machine port group so that is visible in the network profile creation screen. Our last item we will be covering today will be on a topic that simply can't be fully explored in one video, but still worth mentioning. That's going to be around network extension performance. There are several network extension videos on this channel to review if you're not up to speed, so make sure to check those out. I want to start by saying that network extension performance is reliant on the underlay to the AVS environment. If there are non-optimized routes across a physical network underlay, that will hinder network extension performance as a whole. There are some embedded tools to use to help determine what speed your service mesh is capable of. One simple option is going to your HCX plugin in vCenter, go to Transport Analytics, and then select Test Service Mesh Uplinks. This will begin a series of tasks that use iPerf under the hood between HCX service mesh appliances that will give you some general numbers. It will also compare those numbers to the minimum specifications needed for different types of migrations to let you know if your bandwidth will suffice. 
If the output of the test does not come in line with your expectations based on your interconnect to Azure, it's best to start investigating the service appliance network all the way through to your express router VPN and your hub or global reach configuration. One thing that could be affecting this number, especially if you are using VPN, could be your MTU setting. MTU settings are applied at the network profile level and can be updated. MTU related issues are not always directly shown in throughput numbers. A wide array of symptoms can arise, such as RDP sessions not fully connecting or SMP or NFS shares taking a very long time to connect or transfer data. It could also cause a myriad of other symptoms. Fortunately, within the HCX CLI, we can run a utility that will test different MTU sizes in either direction. Once an appropriate MTU size has been identified, you must remember to update both sites' sides, meaning both your on-prem and ABS network profile configuration. It is highly recommended if you're connecting to an Azure over VPN to be running your MTU at 1350. Depending on your environment, you may need to go lower. That covers some of the top issues I've seen. If you ran across this video through a random search, I hope one of these resolutions addresses your challenges. Are you an Azure VMware Solution Pro or HCX Pro who thinks a common issue is missing? Make a comment below to help someone out or potentially spring a YouTube short on this channel. See you next time, everyone.